Hey, it's Arrow, and this is Vocal Defragging. Vocal Defragging actually takes place while I'm on a transition walk through this beautiful forest in South Charlotte, North Carolina. A transition walk is giving yourself permission to kind of sort things out, creating the room to go through your different mindsets and mood swings. We all have them. The thing is, is that we just don't listen to them, and that's what doing a transition walk is all about. And then when you combine it with defragging, it really gives you enough space to find out who you are. You have to learn how to ask the questions and question the answers. Now, what we do here is not vocal defragging. This is teaching. This is showing you different ways that you can put your mind to work for you so that you can learn more about you. Ask the questions, question the answers. This is vocal defrag. A couple of thoughts have come together over the past 48 hours that I think could develop a a path for us to walk on. And the first thought is, is that can having too many thoughts be declared as being moodiness? And the second thought actually came to me two days ago. And it's like, I want to treat my life like I do bowling. Slow it down and follow through. Now, let's, let's marry the two thoughts. Can having too many thoughts be declared as being moodiness? And if you were to slow it down and follow through, would that moodiness locate answers? First of all, we do have too many thoughts because there's too much going on at all times. You can't go anywhere on the internet without your mind being just brutally attacked by so many different forms of content. I first came aware of this while I was studying the words of Julia Cameron in her second book, The Vein of Gold, where she actually challenged us to go into what's called a reading deprivation. We all go into a grocery store, and while we're waiting in line, what are we doing? We're reading the magazines, or we're studying the covers. And so what she wanted to do was challenge us to not do that, to stay away from the headlines and to stay completely away from the newspaper stories. And the reason why is because so many of us base our own personal lives on what we're reading in paragraph number one. We will shape a decision and we will decide in that moment of now what we're going to do and what we're not going to do. And that's where we need to really put focus, is that if we have too many thoughts, do we declare it moodiness? Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to slow it down and follow through, just like bowling. Slow it down meaning maybe we need to get some reading deprivation going on. Maybe we need to create some space in a lot of the things that we're doing. I'm going to give you a good example here. This morning... I was in the studio, I did the dishes, I did a lot of writing, and I had to fix one of the cupboards in my kitchen because the screw was coming out, all within about a 25-30 minute period. That's a lot. That really is a lot, especially from somebody who brags about living this Google Calendar lifestyle. None of that was on my Google Calendar. Every bit of that was, oh my God, it's all coming down right now. So what it does is it gets inside the mind and it starts to clog things up and you start feeling like the rest of your day is going to be a disaster because you've already done so much and it was all unexpectedly. So as you make that journey of trying to figure out, do too many thoughts Does it declare moodiness? And if so, how can we make sure that we stay away from that little area? Because I am a creative person and I am a daily writer, thoughts are coming at me at all times. But I was doing some research on that, that having too many thoughts about the same subject, there are many times that you should be calling up a professional and having them figure out why you've got too many thoughts. Well, my reasons is because I host a lot of podcasts. I do a lot of things. I'm in the public eye. I've got to have different stories. Otherwise, people will think he says the same old shit all the time. So the thing is, is that you've got to keep moving forward without clogging yourself up with too much content. I use the daily writing to help set free. Does it mean that I have to open myself up for more thought? Well, it comes naturally, so it's going to be very difficult. But if you have the awareness of where your thoughts are coming from and how you should develop those thoughts and how many should come real, then what you do is that you have a truth with yourself. You have to trust yourself. You have to build with yourself. So, you know, having too many thoughts, does it officially declare moodiness? I'm going to go yes on this because when I do have too many thoughts, it does affect my mood, which then leads to the defragger, and the defragger is going to ask the questions, so what's going on? What? Why? How'd you get here? Why are you here? How can we get you away from this? 
And so while I was going through my multiple moods this morning, I asked that question and thought, you know what? Let's break this up. Don't just sit here in this puddle of thoughts and think that you're going to heal in just a moment. What you need to do is get up and do other things. So I did the laundry and I fixed the cupboard in the kitchen. So when you do things like that and you take a transition walk, all of those thoughts that you've got stuffed inside that head that is creating the moodiness, now you've got a different kind of space. It's not just you being a Debbie Downer against yourself. It's you asking the questions and then questioning the answers. I call it vocal defragging.